Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. <coughs> we begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchitanandam Vandeham yo khilan jagat, chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, liraya. Vishvesham satchida nandam, vandeham yo khilan jagat, chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, liraya. In this course, we are concentrating on the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha is one of the four major types of Samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Vahurihi and Dvandva. Tatpurusha Samasa is perhaps by far the most productive of the Samasas in Sanskrit. There are many varieties of the Purusha Samasa which is not the case of the other Samasas as well. Also, the number of sutras composed by Panini in order to explain the Tatpurusha Samasa are quite a few, quite a good number of sutras in comparison with the sutras composed to explain other samasas, be it samasa vidhayaka sutra or samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra or samasa swara vidhayaka sutra, there are many sutras in comparison with the other samasas stated to explain tatpurusha samasa by Panini. These are some important features of Tatpurusha Samasa. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be summed up in brief in the following equation. We have X and Y, two independent separate entities in the form of the meaning as well as the word form and also accent. But this X and this Y, they are interrelated. And so, the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and generate an output which is one form, one unit. And this output is of the nature XY. Now, this is one unit in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as the accent. So there is Ekarathi Bhava with the three features, namely Aikarthya, Aikapadya and Aikasvarya present over here. What is significant about the Tatpurusha Samasa is that in this generated output XY, Y assumes the role of the head by default. Therefore, now this one unit XY, if at all is to be related with any other external unit in the sentence, that interrelation will happen only through Y. And that interrelation cannot happen with X without going through Y. When X has an interrelation with any other external unit without going through Y, 
that is con considered as an exception and is noted down as asamartha samasa in the tradition. We also studied some of the varieties of Tatpurusha. We have so far studied Vibhakti Tatpurusha, then we studied Karmadharaya, Dvigu was also part of it. Then we studied Ekadeshi Samasa, followed by Nay Tatpurusha Samasa. Then we studied the Pradi Samasa, and now we are studying Upapada Samasa, stated by the Sutra Upapadam Ating 2 to 19. Upapadam Ating. In this sutra, Upapadam is one slash one, meaning the word designated as Upapada by 3192 Tatropapadam Saptamistham. Because of this sutra now, Upapadam being in the Prathama Vibhakti, it will be termed as Upasarjana, and then by the sutra Upasarjanam Purvam, the Upapada will occupy the initial position in the Samasa. There will be Purva Nipata of the Upapada. Ating is another word which is in one one. What it means is which is not a thing. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa, also Samartha Padavidhi. The meaning of the Sutra is any Subanta whose Pratipadikas are designated as Upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a Tinganta. I repeat, any Subanta whose Pratipadikas are designated as Upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a Tinganta. So the question is, what is the need of the word Tinganta? So the question is, what is the need of the word a thing and what is achieved by this negation? Because when we make not a tinganta a condition for this sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta. And this is available to us anyway because of the continuation of the words sup, etc. So we are forced to think that this sutra, in this sutra, the basic condition of sup and saha supa does not apply. Rather, sup and saha will only apply. So the structure of the compound derived by this application of this sutra would be something of the following kind. So we have two padas. And one of them has got a sup at the end. It is a subanta, where su comes at the end. And the second one is actually not a subanta. It is a kradanta. That means it is derived by adding the suffix krit to a verbal root. So first subanta ends in su plus dhatu plus krit. And then su gets deleted and the Pratipadika of the first Subanta remains, plus Dhatu plus Krut also remains. So that would be the generated output. Then we also stated that the Upapadas are mainly stated in 3.2 and then we said that we would study some of the Sutras which prescribe the Krut suffixes which are part of the generation of the Upapada Samasas. We have already studied the Sutra Karmanyan 3 to 1 and now we are studying the next Sutra Vavamascha 3 to 2. Vavamascha. Now in this Sutra there is there are two Padas Vavamaha and Cha. Vavamaha is Phi slash one of va va ma, cha means and. The words continued are dhatoho from 3191, which means immediately after a verbal root, pratyayaha 
from 311, Karmani 71, which means when karma is the upapada, an 1 slash 1, meaning suffix a, tatropapadam saptamistham 3192, kridatin 3193, also kartari krit 3467, which means the meaning of an is karta. So now the meaning of this particular sutra is the following and also the suffix an is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root va, va and also ma. When the upapada is the word having the relation of an object with the action denoted by that particular verbal root. We repeat. And also the suffix an is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root va, va and ma when the upapada is the word having the relation of an object or karma with the action denoted by that verbal root. The verbal root va in stated in this sutra refers to the verbal root vhenya as stated in the Dhatu Patha, which means Spardhayam Shabdicha, in the sense of competition as well as making sound. The verbal root Va mentioned in this sutra refers to the verbal root Venya Tantu Santane to weave, and also the verbal root Ma mentioned in this sutra refers to Mangamane as mentioned in the Dhatu Patha to measure. Now if we have the meaning one who competes with the heaven, if this is the meaning then Swargam Vayati is the Laukika Vigraha and then Swarga is related to the verbal root Va as Karma. So there is semantic relatedness so samasa is possible and then we have this this sutra applying and adding the suffix an so we have svarga plus am plus va plus an upapadam ating is the sutra which prescribes this particular compound and so now svarga plus am plus va plus an is the alaukika vigraha now, in this Alaukika Vigraha, the Samasa Saudhnya applies, after which the Pratipadika Saudhnya also applies, and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes the Pratyaya Am. In An, An is deleted by Tasya Lopaha, so we have Swarga plus zero plus Bha plus A. And then because the suffix a is having the marker an a, the sutra 7333 applies and adds the augment ya at the end of the verbal root va. So we have swarga plus zero plus vaya plus a. And finally we get swarga vaya as the derived compound output, which means the same as swargam vayati. Now we don't, now we know that vaya, even though it is derived after the suffix an and is a kridanta, cannot be used freely. You cannot say something is a vaya. That is not possible. The verbal form vaya comes into being only in conjunction with any upapada having the relation of karma with the meaning of the action of ve. So Swarga Vaya, that is the compound output derived. So this is a Nitya Samasa. Similarly, after adding the suffix An and undergoing the same process described here, we derive Tantu Vaya, one who weaves the strings. It's called Tantu Vaya. And then Prathamayaka Vachana is Tantu Vayaha. Similarly, one who measures the grain is called Dhanya Maya. 
and dhanya maya is the prathama ekavachana. So, swarga vaya, tantu vaya, and dhanya maya are the three examples derived by 3.2.2. The sutra which applies in adding the augment ya is ato yuk chinkrutoho. Now, this particular sutra 3.2.2 which states the addition of the suffix an after these three roots is actually an exception to 323 which we shall study now. And that is the reason why it is stated immediately after the stating of the suffix an. Now let us go to 323. Ato Nupasarge Kaha. This sutra has got three padas, Ataha, Anupasarge, and Kaha. Ataha is 5 slash 1 of At, which means immediately after A. Anupasarge is 7 slash 1, which means without preverb or Upasarga being the Upapada. Kaha is 1 slash 1 of k, the suffix a, which means karta or agent. Words continued are dhatoho, which means immediately after a verbal root from 3191, pratyayaha from 311. Karmani is continued, which means when karma is the upapada. So also, sa tatro papadam saptami stham and kridating kartarikrit 3467, which is also stating the meaning of the suffix as karta. Overall, the meaning of this sutra 323, ato kaha, is the following. The suffix ka is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root which ends in a when the upapada is the word having the relation of an object with the action denoted by that verbal root and when the upapada is not an upasarga. I repeat, the suffix ka is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root which ends in a when the upapada is the word having the relation of an object or karma with the action denoted by that verbal root and if that upapada is not an upasarga, anupasarge. So here is the structure. We have the first subanta ending in am denoting the interrelation between this subanta and the dhatu as part of the next word as karma. And this dhatu is added with the suffix krit. Now this suffix is k and the dhatu is ending in a. So we have a pratipadika plus am plus dhatu plus krit. And then am gets deleted. And then am gets deleted. And so what remains is the pratipadika in the purvapada plus the verbal root ending in a, plus the suffix k, which is a. Here is an example. The meaning is, one who donates a cow, as well as a bull, and also a blanket. Now, if we take one who donates a cow or bull first, we can have the vigraha, laukika vigraha, as gam dadati. Gam dadati. Now, cow is related with the action of giving as karma. That is the interrelation. So, in this particular sense, because the verbal root da ends in a, and because there is no upasarga preceding the verbal root da, therefore now, we add the suffix k over here and we get go plus am plus da plus k 
as the alaukika vigraha now here and this is termed as samasa because of upapadam ating and then samasa saudnya happens then this is termed as pratipadika after which supodhatu pratipadika yo applies and deletes am so we have go plus 0 plus da plus a and in the suffix ka ka is deleted by the selopaha so we have da plus a then we have the final a uh, in da deleted and so we have go plus 0 plus d plus a and then we join these elements together and we get go d go d means the same as gam dadati one who donates a cow or bull is go d and one who donates a blanket is kambalad kambalam dadati same process kambalad goda and kambalad are the finally derived compound output from gam dadati as well as kambalam dadati similarly if we have the meaning one who protects the back of the foot or finger we have the laukika vigraha as parshnim trayate it as parshni means the back of the foot so now since parshni is related with the meaning of the verbal root tra as karma which is suggested by dvitiya also there is semantic relatedness between these two elements and tra can get now the suffix k because it is also ending in a so this sutra atonopa sarge kaha applies and adds the suffix k after the verbal root tra and so now upapadam ating also applies and now we have parshni plus am plus tra plus k as the alaukika vigraha vakya after this the samasa saudnya happens the pratipadika saudnya happens and then supodhatu pratipadika yo applies and am is deleted tasalopaha deletes k at the beginning so we have parshni plus 0 plus tra plus a and then because of the suffix k the a vowel in the final position of tra is deleted and so we have parshni plus 0 plus tra plus a atolopa itiche is the sutra which deletes this dhatu final a when the suffix having k as a marker follows so now we get the form parshnitra and one which protects the finger it's called angulitra parshnitra and angulitra we can generate many many such forms following all this particular procedure next we have supistha 324 3, there are two padas in the sutra supi and stha supi is 7/1 meaning when any subanta is the upapada stha is 5/1 meaning immediately after the verbal root stha which means to remain words continued are dhatoho from 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyaya which means pratyaya this is continued from 311 tatropapadam saptami stham 3192 kridating 3193 kartarikrit 3467 which is also stating the meaning of the suffix as karta so now the meaning of this sutra is the following the suffix k is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root which ends in stha when the upapada is any subanta 
and not just the word having the relation of an object, karma, with the action denoted by that verbal root. It can be any subanta. I repeat, the suffix k is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root which ends in stha when the upapada is any subanta and not just the word having the relation of an object or karma with the action denoted by that verbal root. So we have Ratipadika plus Su as the first Purvapada and then the second part of the compound and the second part of the compound consists of the verbal root Stha with the suffix K. So then Su Pratyaya gets deleted and so we have first Pratipadika plus zero plus Tha plus K and then we get first Pratipadika plus Tha plus K as the finally derived compound output. Now, let us take the examples. One who stays on an even position, Same Tishthati. This is the meaning and here Sama is the substratum of the action of remaining, one who remains. So, Sama is the substratum of the Karta of the action of remaining. Therefore, there is semantic relatedness and now in this sense, we are going to add the suffix ka after the verbal root tha. So now we have sama plus ni plus tha plus ka. This is the alaukika vigraha. Upapadam ating makes this particular compound. There is samasa saudhnya there, after which the pratipadika saudhnya applies, after which ni is considered to be a sup to be deleted by supodhatu pratipadika yoho. And so we have sama plus zero plus tha plus a. And then this final a in tha is deleted by atolupa iticha. And then we get sama plus stha plus a. And so finally we get samastha. This is not samastha, this is samastha. Similarly, we get the word grahastha, very, very crucial, very important word also culturally, grahastha. Grahastha is also derived in the similar fashion. It means one who stays at home, grahe tishthati. Now, just as we can derive samastha and grahastha, there are multiple words which can be derived in this similar fashion. And in fact, they are derived and they are in circulation in modern Indian languages. Now this sutra is broken into two parts and the first part is interpreted to mean the following. Atonupasarge kaha is broken into two pieces. The first part means the suffix ka is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root which ends in a when the upapada is any subanta and not just the word having the relation of an object with the action denoted by that verbal root, but it could be any subanta. But that is added, but that could be an upapada, and then the suffix ka will be added to any verbal root that ends in a. The present sutra adds the suffix ka only after the verbal root stha. This sutra says that it should be extended and this suffix ka should be added to any verbal root which ends in a. Then this sutra is applicable to all the verbal roots which end in the vowel a. And so pa can also come in the domain of this particular sutra. And so we have one who drinks by two means as the meaning dvabhyam shonda tundabhyam pibati. And in this sense we will derive the compound dvipa. So the B plus bhyam, pa plus ka, and then a in pa gets deleted because atolopa teacher applies, and so we have the B plus zero plus pa plus a, pa plus a, and we finally get the word dripper. Dripper. Dripper is an elephant. Similarly, padapa, padaihi pipati, and we derive the compound in the similar fashion, and we have these finally derived compound words. 
Now the tradition has noted that there are usages where this compound has happened where the suffix ka denotes the bhava meaning namely the state of an action. So if we have the meaning the rise of the mice or moth, the laukika vigraha is akhunam uttanam and the alaukika vigraha would be aku plus am plus ud plus tha plus ka. Upapadam ating applies so the compound takes place, samasa saudhnya takes place, so there is pratipadika saudhnya and because this is a pratipadika, so the supratyaya namely am in this gets deleted in the next stage and so you have aku plus zero plus ud stha plus a and then finally a in stha is deleted so you have aku plus ud plus stha finally we do the sandhi udastha stambho purvasya and then we get the form aku tha or shalabho tha To summarize, 322 is an exception of 323 and that is why it is stated before it so that the continuation of the word an is smoother in the section. A 324 had to be interpreted by breaking it into two pieces, one accounting for the suffix ka to apply to one specific verbal root mentioned in the sutra namely stha and the other one to account for those usages where the suffix ka is added to any verbal root that ends in a in order to account for those types of usages and such words and such usage is innumerable. The tradition added that the new usage also makes this compound by adding the same suffix in the sense of bhava and not just the karta. By these devices, the tradition showed that the language was growing and that the users were making compounds of different kinds for which the grammar rules were falling short of adequacy. In modern Indian languages, we see several compounds formed by applying this rule. So the high productivity of this type is highly is highlighted in this particular grammar. We continue studying the Upapada Saudhnya in the next lecture also. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.